Uh, good afternoon. We are tapped in school and we are investigating whether the gene CDKL1 has a role in blood vessel development for cardiovascular disease. So first of all, the study. Um, the University of Sheffield carried out a clinical trial uh, in which a group of patients were presented to hospital with complaints of heart pains. Um, they all were found out to have atherosclerosis, which is just the hardening of the arteries due to fatty deposits. Um, surprisingly though, only half the group went on to develop a heart attack, so then the other half uh, acted as a control group. Over a nice day period, the gene expression patterns of both groups were analysed using an aphometric gene chip. This was done by extracting Mestra RNA from the blood samples taken from the patients. The RNA was then fluorescently labelled and hybridised onto a gene chip. After scanning, the two data sets were analysed and to show an increase or decrease in gene expression. Overall, H2 genes were found to have a significantly different in expression. To narrow down our search at Tapton, we decided to use the um, open source database Ensemble uh, to identify uh, zebrafish orthologs by performing sequence alignments. We chose all flogs which had a high percentage identity to humans as it meant that the functions carried out by them were near enough the same. Overall, CDKL1 had the most expressed um, function after 30 days. And as you can see, the gene CDKL1 um, has been classed as a cyclin dependent like as it, contain, as it contains a conserved domain for binding cyclin as shown by this section here and a domain for uh, kinase shown here. Um, its structure is also very similar to the human gene, CDK2, and um, we believe that they may f carry out the same function as, and CDKL1 is um, a novel gene, as no function has yet been assigned to it, um, but we know that the cyclin-dependent de cyclin kinase family has a very important role in controlling the cell cycle. Um, so, obviously, it's a novel gene. That means that any scientific research that we indeed carry out at Tapton is new and it will help aid the scientific process, whether it helps our pro help our project or anybody else's. There are several reasons why we use zebrafish as our model organism when investigating heart disease. Well, firstly, zebrafish embryos are transparent. This means that the development and the staining of the dorsal aorta, which is their main artery, and other blood vessels are clearly visible down a microscope. Secondly, zebrafish embryos develop rapidly. This means that the major organs and systems have all developed within the first 36 hours post fertilization. Um, during experiments used when studying cardiovasculature, it is sometimes necessary to restrict the blood flow. In mammals, restricting the blood flow causes hypoxia. This can cause shock symptoms and can sometimes cause death. This means that the effects of hypoxia are not separate from the effects of restriction of blood flow. Zebrafish embryos, however, are small enough to survive by simple oxygen diffusion. Zebrafish embryos are still attached to the yolk sac, and this means that they are not free feeding and it makes ethics approval easy to obtain. Finally, we are closely supported by Dr. Tim Chico's lab, and they provide us with all of the fixed embryos and mutants that we require. Um, so the method that we used is called in situ hybridization, um, which is used to locate where a gene is being expressed on the basis that if it is being expressed, then mRNA will be transcribed in that location. So first of all, a DNA template for CDKL1 was um, PCR amplified and then a probe was synthesized and a chemical called digoxygenin attached. So then when we applied this probe uh, to the fixed zebrafish embryos, it uh, um, hybridized to the mRNA. We then washed the embryos with a monoclonal antibody that had an enzyme attached and this bound to the digoxygenin and then finally we added a colourless substrate to the enzyme um, which went blue where CDKL1 was being expressed. So our results show 
that CDK1 was being expressed in day one and day two post fertilization embryos, but not day three. And this expression was localized to the hypochord and the notochord, which are these two here. And um, the hypochord signals to adjacent tissue for the development of blood vessels, and it's also reported um, in the article at the bottom. It's reported to be involved in signalling the development of the dorsal aorta. So our next question was that if CDKL1 is linked to blood vessel formation, then if embryos have increased blood vessel formation, then do they have increased CDKL1 expression? So to look at this, we used a VHL mutant homozygote, which was produced from a cross between two heterozygotes, and this had increased blood vessel formation. And from the pictures, you can see that this also had increased blood vessel formation, um, increased CDK1 expression even. Um, so this result from these results are quite remarkable because we had a list of 80 genes to investigate, and with our first screen, we found one which has a link to human CVD and also um, we have evidence that it plays a role in development of zebrafish cardiovascularature. Um, so the information I'm going to go through now is from literature, so this isn't experiments we've conducted ourselves yet. Um, so the study you see on the screen was from a paper that conducted a preliminary investigation into CDKL1's role in zebrafish. They used reverse genetics to determine CDKL1's function, which means that they uh, removed its expression and observed any phenotype consequences. The specific technique that they used was called morphine knockdown, which is what I'm going to go through with you now. So um, they, what is done is that you add a short section of RNA, which is complementary to CDKL1's mRNA. So this binds to it, and it prevents the ribosome from binding to the mRNA. So effectively, the protein isn't translated, so its expression is reduced. Um, so we can see from the diagram that when CDK1 mRNA is um, knocked down, you get reduced levels of sonic hedgehog. So as you can see there, there's a big difference. And then in all these experiments, as a control, we re-add back the CDK1 mRNA. And once this is done, you can see that um, sonic hedgehog levels are elevated again. Um, this specific study was looking at a neuronal role um, related to CDK1 as it was looking at neurogenin and sonic hedgehog genes. Um, in a lab meeting with Team Chico, we discussed these results and we came to realise that sonic hedgehog is widely reported to signal via VEGF, which stands for vas vascular endothelial growth factors and um, NOTCH in a pathway during arterial endothelial differentiation. Um, this is where our proposed pathway that you see here has arisen. So our hypothesis is that CDK1 sits on top of this pathway and activates sonic hedgehog and the subsequent signal cascade to blood vessel development. Um, this is very exciting because now not only do we have a novel gene that's related to blood vessel development, we also have a potential pathway to investigate, which is what our research has been focused on, as you now shall see. Um, so to test this hypothesis, we uh, did a load of ex uh, want to do a lot of experiments, but they can be quite expensive and time consuming. Uh, so we knew that if CDK1 did sit at the top of this pathway, then there should be a process known as negative feedback. Whereas if you uh, inhibit some of the uh, genes, then blood vessel growth uh, will stop. So we used uh, a site called Gene Expression Omnibus which is an open source database where scientists doing a micro, micro array of experiments uh, share their results. So they might uh, add a certain drug or chemical to a load of different genes and whether they're interested in it or not, they stick it all on the website so that we can go and search for uh, something that's relevant to our uh, experiments so then we can get their results without having to do the experiments themselves. Uh, so for an example, uh, they uh, use a drug called cyclopamine uh, which inhibits sonic hedgehog which is at the very top uh, and that should cause a negative feedback mechanism, uh, which basically means that CDK1 is upregulated. It's not there, but um, and so on gene expression omnibus, they showed in our results that there was an increase in uh, uh, CDK1 expression once it had been added. Uh, and also, this kind of the other way around is we use uh, a drug called VEGFA, which uh, upregulates VEGF, which is already in the pathway. And that led to a, redu a reduction in the expression of CDK1, which again supports the hypothesis of negative feedback. 
so now we have to confirm these results experimentally. Um, essentially, we're going to repeat the GEO experiments, but in zebrafish, as opposed to just an endothelial cells, as shown in James's slide. Um, our first candidate was VEGF. We did try to inhibit Sonic Hedgehog, however, our experimental technique, technique was incorrect. Um, so VEGF signaling can be inhibited with AV951. Our hypothesis was to suggest that this drug should inhibit VEGF signaling and through a negative feedback mechanism, um, increased presence of CDKL1. Uh, here are our results. So the top panel is the control experiment and the bottom panel is treatment. Embryos were exposed to the drug for six hours from 24 hours post fertilization. So the embryos here are actually 30 hours old. I should mention that these experiments were carried out um, in the Chico lab by one of our students on summer placement. As we don't have the home office license for this kind of experiment, we only perform the in situs on the fixed embryos subsequent to any treatment. Um, it doesn't look like we have the expected results as we'd predicted. However, when performing the in situs, the idea is that um, you stop the staining reaction once stain can be seen. So, as you can see, we stop the staining once um, stain can be seen in the notochord, and that may have been too soon. If you left it for the hypochord to be seen, then perhaps we'd seen a difference. <coughs> So I'm going to talk to you about our experiments with notch, and so this is where it gets a bit complicated. Notch signaling, um, notch signaling allows cells to orientate themselves when they're growing across a surface. If, like, as in our project, we consider endothelial cells, then this cell layer is one cell thick. Uh, the cells in development will grow across the surface, but when they contact each other, their growth will be inhibited, uh, resulting in the single cellular layer, and this is called contact inhibition. Notch is a membrane-spanning protein with extracellular and intracellular domains. In this figure, the signal sending cell uh, has delta, which is another membrane-spanning protein. This will, inter <coughs> this will interact with the notch on the signal receiving cell, which causes the intracellular domain to be uh, cleaved by a process called proteolysis. This intracellular domain can then, uh, is then untethered from the membrane and can translocate to the nucleus to initiate gene expression and change cellular behavior, such as the cessation or stopping of cell division. We can inhibit NOTCH with the drug DAPT, uh, which is a gamma secretase inhibitor. And gamma secretase is what cleaves this intracellular domain. However, in our results, there is no real difference between the control and the treated embryo. And this can be because of the uh, reasons that have already been mentioned. <coughs> So that there is another way we can ask the same question of how to inhibit NOTCH. So instead of doing it with a drug, we could do it with um, genetics. So uh, we investigated CDKL1 staining in a mutant zebrafish called MindBomb. MindBomb is a gene that codes for a ubiquitin ligase, and this targets proteins for degradation and recycling in the cell. MindBomb is important in NOTCH signaling as it functions in the signal sending cell which is on the left here, and on the right is the signal receiving cell. So in this figure, um, you can see that the internalization or endocytosis here um, of the interacting delta and notch proteins, which are these two there, um, is initiated by their ubiquitination by mind bomb. And this process is essential for the notch signaling to proceed. In mind bomb mutants, however, this recycling of the notch extracellular domain does not occur um, because you can't cleave the intracellular and extracellular domains apart. So the translocation of the intracellular domain to the nucleus to initiate gene expression does not happen. So when the cells come into contact with each other, there's no effect. They, they basically they, they don't know that they've come into contact with each other. So these are our results on the right, and they actually completely contradict our hypothesis, but that's fine, it's, it's better than there being no difference. Um, but we still think this is a positive result, a, a promising result. As CDKL1 was highlighted in a human trial, mind bomb is important in vascular development in zebrafish, and yet again, CDKL1 is linked. 
So we were actually expecting there to be increased CDK1 expression because of the negative feedback hypothesis. But this is just really showing that science is actually very, very complicated because of the cross talk between multiple pathways. So even if you're trying to just um, change one thing, it can have multiple effects on loads of different pathways and it's very hard to dissect. So our future work is to investigate sonic, he sonic hedgehog inhibition on CDKL1 expression pattern and do further repeats of the VEGF and notch pharmacological inhibition, but instead with termination of the staining upon onset of the hypercord staining, which is what was said earlier. And also to redevelop our hypothesis in the light of the mind bomb result, because they do contradict what we predicted. So thank you to Tim Chico and all his colleagues in his lab and also to the Wellcome Trust and to University of Sheffield to help us do all this research since 2012. Thank you. I've got a quick question. Hi, um, did you do all that research this year or was that like an amalgamation? No, so this has been research ongoing from Tapton students since 2012, so it's a collection, it's ongoing work. Okay, no, thank you very much.